Welcome in to another late night edition with the real underscore G Warner of betting the pitch. This is a European soccer edition, specifically covering Champions League quarterfinals. Uh, we do have some future to advance numbers. We can go through those. Uh, plus, we'll go through Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Uh, nice part is we don't have any Champions League teams taking weeks off, which is great. Uh, certainly adds to the dynamism of the sport. Uh, we'll have an ultimate best bet end of show uh for this week's i guess against the spreads uh, unless there's some real big interest in me uh i guess that i haven't discovered yet uh because i'm really looking at lines I, I i grabbed some from a couple of weeks ago when these matchups initially were announced i think while i was in kansas city for the big 12 tournament but uh we'll also go through uh and try to plot out some of the movement so far so thank you for all for tuning in especially those of you that are live with me right now after one 06 central time here in the united states uh but maybe the uh maybe the europeans are awake uh for a nice little early morning football discussion of uh trying to find some winners so uh like i said i'll go through and, and put out ultimate best bet for tuesday and for wednesday um i don't think this is gonna be that short of an episode honestly because uh, i don't ever seem to do that very well but uh maybe it will be and maybe i'll get to sleep uh before 2 a.m we'll see uh but we'll start in the first listed uh, match in this Champions League, and that is uh, Tuesday match. It looks like Arsenal hosting Bayern München. So this is April 9th is when this is starting, and then April 10th is the day after that. Uh, that should be good enough. You see how quarterfinals. So um, in terms of where numbers have been, I'll start there. So Bayern opened as a half a goal underdog with more juice over under at two and three quarters, juice a little bit more to the under than to the over. Uh, since then, that number has changed. So now we're looking at three quarters of a goal underdogs are Bayern München on the road at Arsenal in North London. Uh, total here is two and three quarters now. Uh, juice is flipped. So there's a little bit more on the over than the under. And I would expect in these pretty high level, high watch matches uh, that you expect a lot of money to come in on the bigger club name, uh, which Arsenal should be in terms of popularity. And uh, in general, the, the soccer markets tend to defer to uh, UK money far more than German money. I don't really see a lot of, of, of huge German stuff besides in Germany itself. Uh, than the big clubs like Bayern which do get back quite a bit. But I do feel like Bayern are certainly up against the side that uh, have a bigger name, I think, across the global game. Don't uh, don't get too mad at me because uh, if you look closely and you're watching live on uh, YouTube or, or if you're watching live on Twitter or if you're watching the video version on YouTube, Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, you'll see I'm wearing a Bayern München shirt, believe it or not. And I rarely get a chance to bet them because they've been so dominant in Germany for so long. But here might be a chance. There's a three-quarter goal underdog on the road at Arsenal. That's pretty nice. O over under here is two and three quarters. And the big question for me is Bayern München and uh, their future, really. Thomas Tuchel um, was staying on to the end of the season, has basically stopped censoring himself to the media and basically saying his team doesn't listen, they don't care. Um and partly it seems like that's uh, something that happens to Thomas Tuchel from time to time. It's amazing he's going to make it more than a season, considering I guess he took over halfway through last season. So it's about the, the time he normally gets sacked, but was told he would not be returning after uh, they started losing matches and fell far and further and further behind by our Leverkusen in the German Bundesliga. But anyway, um, it's a very different spot for Bayern to be because they've basically been a favorite in this competition for a very long time. Uh, now they're not only an underdog, but a three-quarter goal underdog. Arsenal have to win by two goals to take a full bet uh, or to take my full stake if I if I bet Bayern München tomorrow. So uh, that's a very different scenario. Uh, and I think there are a lot of questions, especially about uh, Bayern. There are no questions about their title race, but there are plenty of questions about Arsenal and the title race in England with Liverpool and Manchester City, basically a three-way run, three horses going down the final eight legs or seven legs or seven uh fences uh, i think uh uh one of the broadcasters this weekend said whose name has escaped me john champion so i i think my interest in this one is byron munchen um i and it's weird to say this but i actually feel like i like under two and three quarters a bit uh it's it's certainly lower than the number i made it so i don't know that it'll make it to my card per se until we get a three a push on three it's currently juice at bet online minus 140 Speaking of, if you're not a member of Bet Online or Sports Band at AG, please follow podcast description link on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on YouTube. Basically, wherever you're watching, if it's not live on Twitter, um, you can get a link, go sign up. You get a 50% match up to 
Uh, I don't know if there's a maximum actually uh, at Bet Online, but then Sportsbet.ag is giving you a hundred percent match up to five hundred dollars. So go throw five hundred bucks in Sportsbet.ag, and they'll give you five hundred dollars back, and you can use it twice. So make sure you follow the podcast description, uh, the link in the podcast description to go take care of and grab some free money. Cause uh, if you haven't signed up there, it's great to have extra outs with better juice for baseball season, especially if you're not following my Patreon, check it out. Patreon.com slash real and scorchy Warner. Uh, but we'll go back to this Arsenal matchup. And I just, am not really a believer in Arsenal. I mean, they, um, they've killed some really bad teams in the premier league. And I feel like that has made them look a lot better. They really struggled with Porto. Um, a lot of money was made betting against Arsenal in that series, losing on the road in Lisboa or in Lisbon or no, excuse me, in Porto. No, it wasn't in Lisbon. My bad. Uh, my bad to the Portuguese out there. Uh, obrigado. Uh, but I think from uh, an Arsenal perspective, they really looked, um, I mean, the their performance, getting a nil-nil draw on the road at Manchester City when they said they were going for it. Maybe that was gamesmanship and trying to suggest that you're going to play a different style than you ended up trying. But I mean, Arsenal were pinned back the whole time. Um, at home, I don't think Bayern München are the, top, the type of team that are going to defend. And Arsenal looked good this week against Brighton uh, from what I saw scoreboard watching. Uh, but I think Bayern München are uh, one of the bigger threats to score goals in this whole event. Uh, and let's say that Harry Kane guy certainly knows how to score and knows how to play in North London derbies in Arsenal. So I think that might mean something. I mean, this competition, you can't ask for more motivation. It's the only way for Bayern München to find any sort of trophy this season. So they should be going for it like crazy. And Arsenal are, are certainly going for it, but they're not really used to Champions League. Haven't had a ton of success. I mean, it's really struggled with Porto in the uh, round of 16 now here in the quarterfinals i'm just not really a believer in arsenal so i'm very interested in that Bayern side though i, I certainly con am concerned about their defense i don't love that eric dyer a like january transfer window loan deal has somehow uh usurped the starting position of dial open Meccano, but more so with uh, Kim Min Jae, who I think was uh, the monster, as they called him, uh, one of the only Asian players I see with tattoos, um, who was supposed to come over and take a job. Uh, played so well for Napoli last season, and I I'm still disappointed that he hasn't taken over. We'll see next year, especially based on the price tag. It I'm sure it costs to bring him in. Uh, I imagine he will be starting far more for whoever the next manager is. But um, I just don't really believe in Arsenal. Bukayo Saka has been really banged up. Kai Havertz has not really ever been a reliable, trustworthy source of goals. Gabriel Jesus might might be washed up, might be too old. Um, certainly isn't taking the opportunities like he's had uh, over the, the past few seasons and what he was scoring early in his Arsenal time or time at Manchester City. I just got a lot of questions about Bayern at this point. So uh, I'll, or excuse me, about Arsenal at this point. Certainly questions about the Bayern defense and we don't have that three goals number for that push if it lands there but uh first legs often play in a, in a two-legged tie often play very conservative and i think there's an advantage for bayern being on the road trying to go get a result doesn't mean they have to go too, too far out of their way i don't think they're going to ever sit back and play defensively but that's certainly thomas tuchel's background um and I really like that setup, getting three quarters of a goal, lose by a single goal. They'll probably be very disappointed, but they're not throwing everything forward at the end of the match to try to get an equalizer. And I think that makes the, the defense a lot better late in the game, which is a big deal. And what I'm finding is most of my soccer losses seem to happen in, in stoppage time, really. Um, I mean, that's probably not true, but that's definitely how it feels to me. Um, certainly be looking to see if Bayern climb to a one goal underdog. I doubt that happens. Juice certainly doesn't suggest that'll happen, especially if it opened a half of a goal and climb from there to three quarters. I can't imagine we'll get much more, but I, I do like the plus three quarters on Bayern at this point. Now I'll look to two advanced numbers um, since we're already deep in this one. Arsenal currently minus 165 to get through. So $165 bet will win 100 here in the United States. Uh, the Bayern side, 100 will be 135 so i mean buying our underdogs basically they go to arsenal get a 1-1 draw get out of there uh goes under the total cover the spread and they're probably a favorite i would suspect for the second leg at home in, in munchen um certainly they have had plenty of problems this season but this is their like rebirth of a competition um this gives them a chance to uh i think i i wouldn't be surprised if uh if the like squad is just really embarrassed, like I, it honestly could be considering they have performed and this is the worst Bayern team in, in 11 years, I think it is. So like, um, that's a, that's a pretty bad draw there. I gotta say, um, make sure my audio is working. Um, so yeah, give me, 
give me Bayern, uh, three quarters of goal, and I like the uh, two advanced number plus 135 as well. Move next to the other uh, match in England in Champions League on Tuesday at Real Madrid, or not in England, but involving an English side. Uh, Real Madrid, a pick em right now to Manchester City. I'll tell you where the line has moved since I've been watching it. Real Madrid opened a quarter goal underdog with all the juice. Now they're down to pick em. Juice a little bit still uh heavier on the Manchester City side, but that's a bit of a move. Uh, it seems like the whole marketplace is bought into the Real Madrid getting that quarter of a goal. Maybe that's a result of Manchester City's kind of struggles. Um, certainly not uh, the team to be caught in the English Premier League at this point. They're one of the catchers or everyone's seemingly uh, fighting, and, and there's a pretty close-looking race at this point who's going to make the most mistakes, it seems. Uh, total here is two and a half. Um Looks like it's been there the whole time. It was uh, very juiced uh, initially. To see, let me let me see. So I had okay. So this so that so it's two and a half now. Which so, so in other words, um, feels like the the market's been been taking some money on both Real Madrid and under. So pretty much anti Manchester City, not expecting them to score. I had two and three quarters initially when this number came out. Now it's down to two and a half. Um, it was a little bit more juiced to over last time I had, or when I initially loaded these numbers. I think while I was in Kansas City when the, the the draft or the draw was done and then the matchups were announced. Now two and a half, very juiced to over. But uh, I mean, who knows? It, it's pretty much, I mean, in terms of strategies here, Real Madrid, they've always played great counterattacking Champions League football. That's the Carlo Ancelotti style. It's worked very well. Um, Jude Bellingham has basically been unstoppable, uncoverable. At least he was the first half of the season and injuries plus suspensions and things like that have, have caused some problems for his availability, but I'm still a believer. Um, the Manchester city side, they have not looked as dominant though. They did beat Aston Villa pretty, pretty soundly though. Villa were without their keeper and striker. So two of the most important positions on their team, uh, certainly argue about keeper, but I think Emmy Martinez has, has proven more than enough at this point. Um, I, I think Man City, though, they're going to try to possess the ball. Real Madrid are going to try to keep them from doing that. Uh, but I think Real Madrid ultimately are, are perfectly fine setting up shop, defending their defense, protecting their defense, which has been probably their weak point throughout the season. Um, they haven't scored a ton of goals, but I think their defense has really been so injured and all those problems. They probably don't have Mili Tao. Definitely, or I'd be very surprised if he played a full match. Uh, maybe he comes on to substitute late. Still feels like a big risk, but we'll see. Um, Chua many playing out of position at center back, but maybe that's a better option than Nacho Fernandez there. Um, and Olive has been out for a while. So like, there's a lot of questions about the Real Madrid defense. I'm kind of surprised that Man City are, are only a pick them here. I mean, they, I think we're a one goal favorite last season. When these two teams matched up at home, uh, second leg after I think Real Madrid had drawn the first leg, maybe, uh, maybe they took a lead there. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, memories fading me a little bit. I don't really feel looking up at 118 AM, but, um, I'll be waiting to see if Real Madrid climbed to an underdog. Don't have that yet. Uh, in terms of the total here, I think I'm more interested in under two and a half than anything, but that's a very scary number to play under, uh, with really two, I mean, potentially very good scoring offenses. I mean, very efficient ones at that. Maybe they have less chances going up against each other, but, of course, it, we wouldn't be surprised that anyone from the front lines of either of these two clubs found a goal. So um, very interested to watch this matchup for sure. Um, but I think I'll be waiting to see if if some Manchester City money comes in, as it probably should. Uh, though Real Madrid are at home and play very well at the Bernabeu, I, I think the the more likely scenario is just the the UK, the power of the UK better. And, and I think who's betting a lot of these numbers, they are UK based and probably uh, bigger fans of Manchester City or bigger believers in Manchester City than Real Madrid. So uh, I'll be waiting for that. Looks like the two advanced number Real Madrid a plus 170, $100 when you 170 uh, to advance for Manchester City, $215 when you two, when you that's that 100. Um, so pretty significant favorites here. I mean, uh, two thirds or three to three to two for Real Madrid basically to get through a little bit worse than that. So we're talking probably 65% or so for Manchester city, something around 65, 70%, um, which probably reflects the, this, I mean, the talent Manchester city, I mean, forgive me, but uh, I mean, early Holland, when he's playing in a, a, against a defensive side, it's, it's, he's not the same guy. And um, certainly he's a great penalty kick taker, take kick taker, but hard to expect that in Champions League and also on the road at Real Madrid. Um, man, I just 
I'm, I'm tempted because if Real Madrid take a lead to Manchester City, that 170 looks great. Uh, probably falls significantly, maybe towards even money. Uh, Manchester City might still be uh, favored to advance in that scenario just because they get the second leg at home and they're uh, the better team clearly as a, a favored pick them right now on the road in Madrid. But I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Real Madrid pulled this upset. So I'm going to put Real Madrid plus 170 to advance on my list. Uh, probably like that a little bit less than Bayern München. Uh, but ultimate best bets are coming end of show. Thank you for tuning in, of course. And I mean, it seems like more people coming on later at night. It's amazing, but I'm happy for it. Uh, moving to Wednesday, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back with ultimate best bets end of show with listing both the bets that I'm going with because I think that'd be most interesting for everyone. We'll start with... Uh, I guess where the lines have been. So uh, first match we'll do is, is uh, Atletico Madrid hosting Borussia Dortmund. Uh, looked like my first tracking I had uh, Dortmund a half a goal underdog, even money. Uh, that's sim- that since then climbed to three quarters of a goal underdog. Very juiced at the moment, though. Um, I am fairly interested in the Dortmund side. Uh, there are some certain problems with Dortmund, but they've been really good defensively in this tournament. And it's really hard to argue with how they performed. Uh, I don't even really think I can argue with it. It's been great. Um, do I think that'll continue? Maybe not at a really tough place to play like the Wanda Metropolitano. But uh, I thought in Madrid have not been playing well. Uh, I've been awful away from home. So that makes me very interested in seeing them not do well at home and really struggle away from home. The second leg has a potential to advance number for Dortmund. Um, but I think from an Atleti perspective, I mean, they played so well at home for years that it kind of overshadowed and, and kind of hid how poor they were on the road. But then they started not playing so well at home. And then people started to be moaning about, I guess there hasn't been as much pressure on their manager this season as there was last season, but um, things have not been great. And three quarters of goal favorites to Borussia Dortmund just doesn't really seem like that intelligent of a number. I mean, Dortmund certainly have not been scoring goals at a rate that you'd expect them to. Jaden Sancho has been in and out of the lineup as he was with Manchester United. Of course, that's a big, big question, but I mean, it's a pretty big number, far bigger than I made it. So uh, I'm very interested in that Dortmund side at the very least. I like to under two and a half as well. Um, not a gigantic total. And it seems like that has been trending downwards as well. Um, though actually it looks like it was more juiced to under when I first tracked it at two and a half. So, uh, maybe some over money's coming in and might make this a little bit, uh, easier to stomach, uh, from a, a juice perspective. But I mean, I'm, I'm interested in both the Dortmund side and total here. So, uh, for, for my list of a potential best bet candidate, I'll go Dortmund three quarters of a goal under two and a half. And of course that two advanced number plus plus one fifty. I mean, Dortmund, they're going to have that second leg at home. And if they get any sort of result here, they are definitely a favorite considering Atletico Madrid's struggles. I mean, this number of three quarters of goal favorites at home, Atletico Madrid, though very juiced the Dortmund side. It was a half a goal earlier. Maybe that means Dortmund are a slight pick ish quarter goal favorite maybe at home, but that's still a pretty big change. I usually give quarter of a goal for each home team and don't really move too much off of that. Certainly some home field advantages are potentially worth more than that. I just... I don't really agree with that. And uh, I'm very interested in the Dortmund side. And I feel like they've been underdogs a lot in this competition. We're underdogs at PSV Eindhoven as well. And that was silly, even though they gave up a late penalty to only escape with a draw from uh, Holland. But yeah, I, all this seems to point in the same direction and all into the BVB uh, Schwarzgelben direction. Uh, last but not least, because this was only four games to discuss. Great, I might have kept the bed before 2 a.m. tonight. Awesome. Uh, we'll go with PSG hosting Barcelona for the first leg, uh, in terms of where this number has gone. So we started with PSG at home. It will be played in the Parc de Prince in France, in Paris, in the capital. Uh, if you haven't been to Privé de Dessert in uh, the capital, make sure you go. Um, love that place. Uh, basically all the food in Paris was awesome. Actually all throughout France, there was, and I'll be there in September. So if you're out there, holler, go to the Cote d'Azur. Um, but we'll start with, so Barcelona opened a half a goal favorite, um, uh, or excuse me, half a goal underdog on the road to Parc de France, of course, uh, with a lot of juice that juice has calmed down a little bit, but, uh, still very juiced on the Barcelona side, getting that half of a goal from PSG. 
Uh, total here is two and three quarters. It was even money. Now it's uh, taking a little bit of money on the under. So not as high of expectations of goals being scored, but still two and three quarters. About standard, it feels like most Champions League lines we've seen so far in this knockout stage competition with the multiple legs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, PSG, I'm looking to back in this event because I, I just feel like they're um, – very talented. The Kylian Mbappe situation is awkward because he's leaving, but I think he cares. And seeing uh, Kylian Mbappe get substituted at like 60 minutes over and over and over again makes me feel like uh, they're, as always, more interested in Champions League. But it feels like they're not going to waste Kylian Mbappe. PSG will not, uh, since they know it's the last time they'll have him. They're not getting him hurt playing Liga. He's going to be playing 60 minutes and coming off and giving all of his uh, energy towards Champions League. I love that because I also love the draw getting Barcelona, um, one of the weaker of the bigger name clubs. And I'm surprised to see Barcelona, I guess, at a half of a goal. And, oh, it's bigger than I expected. Uh, but I think it reflects the differences in these two teams. Now, Barca, I mean, they've been scoring better late of late ever since Xavi Alonso's or Xavi said he was leaving. Sorry, Ch regular Xavi, Xavi Hernandez. Um, somehow that was great. I don't know if he'll change his mind and stick around longer because he seems to hate his job as most Barcelona managers do. They just take it so they can get the fame and then get fired but or sacked. But I think Barca, I mean, they're the side that clearly is a, I'm an underdog player in soccer. So um, I'd want that side more than the favorite um, and does feel bigger than I would expect. So I, I think I have to put Barcelona on the list. I have to like under two and three quarters as well. Bigger than the number I made it. Looks like we might get to three, um, which would be really huge push opportunity. If that was available, that'd be great. Um, I don't really love Barca to get through this uh, side, though. I, I got to say, I mean, currently PSG a minus 130 number to advance, $130 win you 100. Barcelona even money, $100 will win you 100. So um, I think. There's a fair amount of respect for the second leg at home for Barcelona. I think making them only even money as a half a goal underdog. We're, we're looking at, I mean, let's see, uh, a quarter goal higher and Atleti are minus 185, 55 cents bigger. I, I think that reflects the probably the popularity and just kind of the situation. Uh, looking at the other spreads as well, the other three quarter goal favorite, um, I guess Arsenal minus 165 there as well, which is a little bit shorter. So Atleti getting more respect than Arsenal. Interesting. And uh, clearly way more respect than PSG. That just seems really flawed to me. Maybe I've maybe I've been asleep at the wheel or something like that, but I, that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So um, PSG is a favorite, especially with the second leg away. Uh, I don't think I can back that as a two advanced number. So um, we're coming to the end of the show, so I might as well get my uh, stuff together, which, of course, I don't know where my stand is. So I guess we'll be doing this in a very interesting makeshift way to try to keep this all together. Uh, but regardless, so I'll do that in one second. Um, so I, I guess it's probably time for the ultimate best bet, which I'll get into in a second. Um, if you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out. Patreon.com says a real underscore G Warner, the best spot to get all my plays, leans, write-ups, everything. College basketball is over which I got to say was not a great end of the season for me. I had an awesome start, was way on track to, to crush my previous season high at pregame numbers, but had a good last, I guess, few days of, of the season, won the under on the college basketball championship tonight, um, or I guess yesterday night it would be on Monday night, um, and also hit the, the UConn Huskies on Saturday, incredible cover. Um, didn't look like that was going to ever be a possibility. Um, also look out for me on the pregame.com MLB podcast recorded tonight with uh, Munaf Meji Manji Manji. Sorry, Munaf. I'll be better about pronouncing that. My bad. Uh, we'll be on there two nights a week. Plus, I have uh, A Brooks Bets at, at A Brooks Bets on Twitter. My buddy Andrew coming on for MLB podcast. We'll be doing those Tuesday nights going forward. I'm not sure about tomorrow night because we are planning to go to the Rangers Athletics in arlington uh don't really want to see the a's but my friend's never been and he's trying to knock off every he's knocked off every baseball park at a brooks bets has and is trying to make sure that he uh gets to see this new one while he's locally in the dallas area um so that's all i got the plug there i guess if you're not subscribed um please do so because then you'll see when the episodes come out especially when we change days i'll be doing my best to try to make that as consistent as possible moving forward 
uh, but simply trying to get schedules together is sometimes a little more challenging than others. Um, like I said, if you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out. Patreon.com slash for real and scorchy warn it is about to get on my plays, leans, right ups across all sports. We're basically going soccer and baseball for a lot of the season now, uh, or, or for a, the foreseeable future. I think we'll probably do a college basketball episode at Biggie Spen and I sort of course to uh celebrate his 11 and 0 best bet streak. Literally every podcast we did for the NCAA tournament, he won his best bet. That was awesome. Good run for him. Uh, if you're not following him yet, do it at Big East Ben on Twitter. Uh, of course, we'll have NFL episodes coming out at Andrew Schnicker, uh, A. Schnick, Schnicker on, on Twitter, and I will be doing some of that. Uh, we'll be going to the NFL draft uh, later this month. Not, I have no interest in that, but uh, it's a friend's bachelor party, so we'll be there for that. Maybe finding some props potential. If you do want to see something like that, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, or subscribe on YouTube, leave a comment and say something like how interested you are in us uh, giving out draft props or something. Certainly have some big college football interests in, in this group going as well. So maybe I can pull the audience and find a way to advise on some winners, uh, make sure we do that moving forward. So uh, I guess it's time for the ultimate best bet portion of the show. And uh, I think I probably need to just go out here and, and do it. So uh, let's... I guess let's let's do it. I got my video ready, I think. So let's go. This is the real underscore G Warren on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and on YouTube. This is the ultimate best bet portion of betting the pitch European soccer edition, specifically focused on the Champions League knockout stages and the quarterfinals. So on Tuesday, the 9th of April, my best bet will be Bayern München. And I'm wearing the shirt, a three-quarter goal underdog. Rare for me to back them, so don't consider this a homer play. I just was in München and Munich and decided to buy the shirt. Uh, as for Wednesday, my favorite play is Borussia Dortmund, a under, a, an underdog three-quarters of a goal at Atletico Madrid in the Wander Metropolitano. Um, it's really hard to pick. Two German Bundesliga sides that are pretty underrated, I think, by the odds makers, and I'm actually very interested in seeing both of them to advance as well. Um, if you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out, patreon.com slash real and score Warner. But for my ultimate best bet on this show, I'm going to go with Borussia Dortmund, the three-quarter goal underdog. I, uh, I'm wearing a Bayern shirt, but Dortmund, I think, have a much better chance to get through, and Atletico Madrid are not scary to me what all, at all whatsoever. And so that'll do it for this episode of Betting the Pitch, the uh, European Soccer Edition. Thank you for staying up late with me. Um, hopefully I'll be able to speak a little bit better English next time and certainly better German though. That's don't expect that too much. Uh, thank you all for tuning in and I will see you all very soon. Next episode will probably be a Europa league, uh, Europa conference league edition coming out Wednesday night, uh, this week. Got to get very refreshed on soccer and looking forward to spending a ton of time. Now that college basketball season has finally gone though it was an awesome time this weekend at Big East Ben and I went to the final four in Phoenix or in Glendale it was sweet had a great time and looking forward to making that trip happen every year so if you want in next year let me know we would love to have more uh more uh more like-minded individuals that come with us so we'll see you all see you on Wednesday night for the uh European soccer edition Europa League Europa Conference League but we'll be doing Champions League the next couple of days and we'll see you all very soon <laughs>